Hi there, Louisa here. I wanted to bomb in here quickly because I am two and a half weeks out of surgery now. So the mastectomy was uh, a while ago. Um, but I'm still recovering and everything, but my energy is finally back to normal and I feel a bit more human and I'm really getting there. So I wanted to put a video together to show you exactly what's coming. I went to a really good group beforehand that told me everything, a bit too much actually. And um, if I could, sh if you don't get the chance to go to a group like that, uh, I wanted to share all this in here so that you know what's coming and you can tell your pu partner and family what to expect so that they don't walk in and find you hooked up to all these machines and they're as surprised uh, as I, w well, anything. So, yeah, I wasn't going to actually do a video because you can see my eye, I look like a right freak today. <laughs> I look like a bit of a weirdo. Um, I had a, with my chemo, I had two chemos, chemicals, and then with it I had two antibodies as well, so Herceptin and Putuzumab or something, or Trapuzumab, I don't know, one of those, and it's the Herceptin, um, they're both, when they're put together they're super brilliant, excellent at killing breast cancer, which it did with me, because I had none left in, in my breast, I just had it left in my lymph node, by the time I got to surgery, so it totally did its job um, for my kind of cancer. So it's I was her hair two and estrogen um, positive. So for that combination, that's what they use, and um, it's great at killing the cancer. But they say it's got the only side effect it has is that it affects your heart. I'm like, oh, what's a heart? I mean, come on. So apparently it has affected mine, so they've put me on a pill and because, for the heart, and because I've never had that happen in my whole life, I'm putting it down to that. But I'm going to go to um, the hospital today anyway, because you just live in a hospital from now on, and um, I will ask and find out, so I'll put it below if it is or isn't. But yeah, I wanted to say about the mastectomy and what's coming, so... <clears throat> Basically, it's up to the surgeon whether you go in the night before or in the morning. I went in the night before and it was a really good choice because it meant that I could get in and settle down. <clears throat> and the nurses say then, go and have, go out and have some dinner and a glass of wine if you're not having antibiotics. And it meant that you just come back and um, you're really chilled and ready for the morning. So that was really good. Um, and then <laughs> the hospitals wake up quite early. I didn't know that. And they come in and clean your room and turn your telly on and give you a cup of tea and stuff. So I may as well just have driven in anyway. Um, and then my breast surgeon came in first. Uh, she's been with me from the start. So it was great to have her. She said um, she had to move things around for her if I wanted her. <clears throat> specifically to do it and of course I did because she's been with me for the whole time and it was really good to see it really reassuring to have her with me again so she came in and just went through everything got signed the bits of paper and all that and then the plastic surgeons come in there two plastic surgeons and one registrar doctor all men it's so weird it's so strange but um, when it's, they just like take your top off, Mrs. Gordon, I'm like, okay, weird. I'm not. I should be used to it by now, but I'm really not. It's just odd. But um, they don't see you as a woman. <clears throat> they just see you as measuring you up for what they're gonna do. They, there's no emotion to it whatsoever, and it's fine. Um, but yeah, his my plastic surgeon was very clinical. Um, very good about it, which was great. He sort of looked at my cesarean scar and said, well, that's not very straight, is it? And I said, well, no, I don't know, I didn't do it. Which was reassuring in a way as well, because then I could see that he was very straight about things and that was quite good. So, um, yeah, they draw all over you with a marker and sort of plan it out and ask you questions and stuff like that. And then you, you just put your hospital gown on very fetching with those lovely socks or stocking things that up, go up to your knees to stop the deep vein thrombosis and you I walked to the anaesthetist room and that was it really uh, anaesthetist was lovely very funny they just joked 
joke you all through it to keep you happy. Um, he was talking about his kids, well, our sons have the same name, and that was the last thing I remember really. Then I was out of it. <laughs> so um, I then um, woke up six hours later. They say that the surgery was eight to 12 hours, it should be, but I was through it in six, so that was pretty speedy. And you wake up with loads of stuff everywhere. So I just want this is a bit I wanted to warn you what's coming really. <clears throat> so I woke up with a central line. You can still see the scar, well, scab at the moment. So a line, like a pick line going in into your vein there. And through that they could take blood if they wanted, even though they didn't. Um, <laughs> or and they also dripped in fluids to keep you hydrated. And um, the, I also had a painkiller on a button so I could press it. If I felt pain coming on or if I was in pain, I could press the button. Didn't have to ask anybody, I could just press it. You can't overdose on it, apparently. Didn't try. And um, that was great. So that was all going straight in, in there. So it's really great to wake up with it all in because you don't have to watch them do it all. I hate that. So that was quite good. Um, so it's all done in your sleep, which is really nice. And then, um, so I had the central line in, and then I had oxygen mask on, on my nose, which is horrible, but um, it's all right. Um, later they put the up, change it to a tube up your nose kind of job, which is just equally as ugh, horrible and not very comfortable, but it was okay. <clears throat> um, you've got a cannula in your hand for them to put in, um, uh, antibiotics or anything that they need to put in that you need afterwards. I don't know why they can't go in there, but it doesn't. Um, so that's quite good. You've got a catheter thing because you can't move, of course, so you've got to have that. Uh, you've got pick lines, fluids, um, the Doppler. So you, you remember if you've ever been pregnant, you remember they could hear the baby's heartbeat with a whew, 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 kind of Doppler thing. Uh, it's the same thing. So because I had the reconstruction on the same day, it meant that they didn't have to take the skin away. It means you can reuse the breast, the the tissue that you already have. They don't need to take the breast skin away because I don't know. Anyway, so they only needed that much skin from my tummy, even though they take a shed load in a very nice way. Um, so from from your cesarean line if you haven't had one to above your belly button they take the skin fat and a slither of mut muscle and what they're looking for you have a CT scan a few days beforehand and what they're looking for is a really good blood artery and vein that goes from the muscle to your skin so they need that skin needs to have a blood flow to it or it dies so <clears throat> When they take it all away, they find find where they found that, and they he knew exactly where it was when he came in in the morning. He he'd been studying, obviously, and they then take the muscle and the skin and those blood vessels, and then they plumb the plumb. They connect the muscle to your armpit, and then the blood flows from that into the skin that they then put in on the breast so they take everything out the breast surgeon the cancer lady takes all this the cancer and everything from your lymph as well <clears throat> and everything in the breast away so yeah and then um they just take that much skin out of all the skin they take just take that much it's all it might even be that much it's nothing and then they plumb it all together and then that blood flow is very important to be able to hear so they put a Doppler in to listen to that so um, when they switch the machine on it's going whoo, 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 whoo. so blood going in blood going out um, and then when they check you all night they want to see whether if you're if it's too white it means the blood's not getting in if it's all red it means the blood's not getting out and they come in every hour and check you all night which is really annoying but it's really good that they do it I suppose so it's really important that they check that it's all the blood's flowing right <clears throat> so the Doppler's there so you've got that tube in um, you've got 
drains coming from all the surgery that they've been doing so all the fluids and to stop any swelling and stuff you've got little flexible tubes uh, plastic tubes that are in there um, the so I had two in the breast and one at either end of the scar that they take all your tummy from uh, the scar is a big long scar it goes from side, one side to the other so I feel like a Russian doll really because um, obviously they sort of shut everything down and then sew it all the way across um, but he's done a very good job it's all very fine the whole thing is amazing I thought I was gonna look like Frankenstein to be honest but um I don't I would show you but I think YouTube would block me um, and you don't want to be seeing that anyway so amazing job <clears throat> I'm really pleased with it honest and um, yeah, so the drains then they go down into bottles for all to see it puts you off cranberry juice forever Anyway, I one anyway. So yeah, so you got four. I had four drains: catheter, cannula, um, fluids, the pick. Uh, oh yeah, you got things on your feet because you can't move. They don't want you to get deep vein thrombosis, so they're trying to pump all the blood back up your legs. So um, there's this thing on your feet, like pumping, very strange, pumping away, and that pumps you, keeps your blood flowing. So that's another thing to just sort of bear in mind that there's lots of stuff going on. There's also, they take your blood pressure and they've got a thing on your finger to check your oxygenated right and things. So um, there's lots going on, um, but there's one thing that, uh, is annoying and it's called a bear hugger b-a-i-r hugger and they say that the wounds your wounds all of it heals a lot better <clears throat> if it's kept warm and luckily it was October for me so it was not it was quite cozy but it's like in you know a lilo that you lie on in a swimming pool um, one of those long beds <clears throat> Sorry, it's just like that, but they pump warm air through it, warm air going through all the time and it's just keeping everything, all the scars that they're sort of healing, uh, keeping it warm because it it just heals a lot better and faster. So um, that's got to be on for 72 hours and at first I was like, oh it's fine, it's nice and cosy and it's lovely and it's nothing and it was, I was like, Wah. walk in the park. But actually after a couple of, after a day or so, it got a bit much. And she, she, at one point I was just like, felt ill and she opened the window and that made all the difference. And it was just, they say to take a fan <clears throat> with you. Like, a, not a like, woo, go Louisa fan. <laughs> that would have been great. No, one a little desktop fan that just blows on your face and um, <laughs> keeps you nice and cool. So do that. Um, I had one, I didn't use it, I should have done. But um, that's something to just bear in mind and then just tell your family that all this is coming as well because my husband definitely hesitated when he walked in and saw me that I was hooked up to a lot of stuff. But um, <clears throat> don't let your kids come for the first couple of days because it's a bit traumatic for them to see you on that many machines and uh, so leave it but after a while they all just start going away they take everything down as soon as they can and as soon as you don't need it anymore it just starts stripping away and that's great 72 hours on the bear hugger thing it was quite cozy but yeah that wasn't great um definitely was glad i was warned about that one but uh recovery it feels like it's really tight on my tummy still even two and a half weeks later and i can't really lift i've got stitches under here so they say don't lift your arm up too high but you have to do all these like exercises and stuff to keep it mobile so maybe i'll do a video on that but um <clears throat> it's quite it wasn't awful it what i really thought it was going to be worse i shouldn't have dreaded it as much as i did um but it, you do get over it and like they come in and, and the physiotherapist try and make you sit on the side of the bed and swing your legs down and I thought that was going to be easy but actually it was quite difficult it is major surgery um, there's no sort of getting around it it is I thought it's gonna be a bit like the cesarean I had but it's not there's a lot more going on honestly I thought it would be all right I was like it's like I thought it sounded like the cesarean without the newborn but no 
it's a bit more serious. There's a lot going on. They've been a lot of places all over the place and your body just needs to rest. Um, I was in hospital for a week and it actually flew by. I read a whole book. I finished a book. I never finish books. I always get to like a little bit at the end and I never make the end. But this time I finished a book. So I was very proud. Um, internet in my hospital in Oxford was amazing. I could stream films and everything. Uh, so download stuff um, on your iPads or whatever. But uh, there was a TV that you can pay for, <clears throat> but I didn't. I had my movies, so I couldn't believe how good the internet was, so that was great. So it did fly by. It, towards the end, it got a bit boring, but you get to know all the nurses. The food's all right. It's not great, but it's all right. It's bearable. Quite nice to be waited on. It's like a pyjama party for a whole week, and they bring you tea and biscuits and everything. It's quite nice, really. So, yeah, just take it as... A um, uh, medical vacation, vacation, holiday. I'm not American, and just yeah, just let it take its course. Don't don't worry about it. Just take it as it is. Give yourself time. You will get back to normal. My arm still feels a bit weird, and if I touch it, I think the lymph nodes have hurt or something. Um, but yeah, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. There's lots of stuff coming up. Now I'm getting back my energy back. I've got lots of stuff coming, so stay with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe, because I'll be doing a lot about nutrition and all sorts. Maybe I'll do those. <laughs> that is not an exercise. Um, a video on exercises or something. But yeah, take care and you'll get through it. Don't worry. See you in the next one.